Safaricom's uh, Kenya's top telecoms operator posted a 5.4% fall in full year pre tax profit due to higher financing costs and the impact of foreign exchange volatility. The company, part owned by Britain's Vodafone, said that the pre tax profit dropped to 17.37 billion shillings after it faced stronger competition as well as inflation. Joining us now from our studios in Nairobi is the CEO of Safaricom, Bob Collymore. Mr. Collymore, great to have you on uh, the program. Thank you so very much for joining us. And as I've just said, we've seen an increase in revenue, we've seen a drop in pre-tax profits, uh, various uh, issues that are coming through there. But at the end of the day, we're starting to see a very strong push to 3G network. You're making a lot of headway with M-Pesa. So give us an indication what's driving revenue up and what we could do to actually start seeing uh, that pre-tax profit number actually going into positive territory. Well, the pre-tax profit number went negative, largely because of uh, Forex and because of higher interest, um, interest repayment. Um, so that was only negative, uh, negative impact. Overall, we've seen growth in customers. We're up to just over 19 million customers. And it was very much a game of two halves, because if you look at the first half, we were down 4 to 7 percent. Uh, so to have recovered and to swung our EBITDA to 35 percent at the full year uh, was actually not a, not a bad performance. Uh, the things which are really driving it is, in addition to voice, which is, is, already, which is still growing, so both ARPU and overall revenues are growing on voice. We were pushing really hard on M-Pesa and on data. Let's touch on M-Pesa because that's where we really saw quite substantial growth. But when I look at the average revenue per user on the M-Pesa front, it went from 81 shillings to 96 shillings. Uh, we know that there's other, uh, you know, bigger drivers for ARPU. Um, M-Pesa seems to be one of those uh, key uh, drivers of growth for your company, given the fact that we saw revenue increasing by around 46%. Where to from here for this uh, value-added product that you're offering? Many are now speculating whether you'd actually have it as a standalone product and, of course, leverage off the strength. No, M-Pesa is, uh, you know, is integral to uh, Safaricom. Um, it was developed essentially as a, as a loyalty tool and has worked very well. And now it's moved into positive EBITDA territory. Um, you know, the, the ARPU has grown because we've got more users using it and we've got more things that you use it for. So recently we've reduced the lower limits. So now you can transfer as little as uh, about 12 US cents. Um, which is the most efficient way of transferring cash. And at the higher end, you can transfer as much as uh, $1,400 per day. Um, so by increasing the number of, of things that you can use M-Pesa for, uh, and, and indeed the number of customers, so we've got about 15 million M-Pesa users at the moment, that has been driving ARPU up, but there's no intention to, uh, to break M-Pesa away from where it is now. It's, yeah. it's performing very well, and it's got a lot of growth left. Uh, with regards to the average revenue per year, and as I mentioned, it's up now to 96 uh, shillings. How much more growth uh, could you actually uh, you know, foresee happening there? I know a lot of the airtime um, transfers that are actually occurring are happening through M-Pesa, uh, or airtime that is actually being bought. So that also being quite a positive uh, element. A lot of the ARPU growth actually has been voice ARPU growth and, and a lot of people don't believe that there is still growth left in voice and we've demonstrated because we took a bold step back in October to readjust prices so we effectively increased prices uh, and we recall that we had about a year just over a year of a very fierce price war here so we took a bold step to put the price up and the market has sustained many of our competitors haven't done so but you know they make their own business decisions not me absolutely and I mean voice uh, from 294 to 303 and that's the ARPU number that we look at. You spoke of the price war, you're looking at a very fierce competitive environment, but you still have uh, quite a strong market share. I mean, we're still looking at market share of uh, around 67%. It's down from around 70% in 2010, uh, Mr. Collymore, but we're still seeing a very sustainable number coming through there. Is this now as, uh, you know, the kind of level that you're comfortable with? Do you believe that you can maintain this market share uh, despite the, the fierce competition that's coming to the fore? Yeah, we believe we can maintain market share and there's, you know, there's subscriber market share and there's revenue market share. And we believe, although not everyone disclosed their numbers, we believe that we've got a higher revenue market share than the, uh, than the customer market share. Uh, and we're, we're comfortable uh, currently where we are. We probably lose an extra few points of market share over the course of the next two years or so. But providing we're north of 60%, then I think we're doing pretty well. I'd also like to touch on interconnect fees. We know that there's going to be another move to drop interconnect fees. This is obviously going to be uh, you know, negative for your company as well. What kind of impact are you pricing in? Are you preparing for this move? Well, um, I think it's by no means a foregone conclusion that uh, mobile termination rates will come down because we've been saying that you, know, you need to have a proper cost study. But if it does come down, then it will have a, an impact. Uh, at this stage, we haven't calculated exactly what that is. But given that we are a net 
receiver of, uh, of termination, then it will have an impact on revenue. But you know, we've actually factored that into our, our planning uh, for the coming year. Uh, and, and what kind of impact then are you expecting uh, down the line? I mean, if you're factoring it in, uh, what is the worst case scenario? Um, uh, well, we're not actually happy to disclose that just now. Um, but um, given that most of our traffic stays on net and most of our competitors' traffic actually terminates on ours, we are a net receiver and we'll yeah. see um, a little bit of an impact. But overall, you know, we continue to give the same guidance that we have yeah. earlier, which is that we will see single-digit growth and we'll see, revenue, we'll see revenue growth and we'll see margin being maintained at the current level. Uh, but, uh, how much um, revenue, revenue split with regards to the impact, well, you know, the interconnect fees, how much of that, uh, you know, those, no those numbers uh, contribute to the overall revenue number? Uh, is it a really large chunk? Would you say that a lot of the revenue comes through from uh, interconnect fees? It's not a, it's not a really okay. large chunk. I mean, the, the real big impact for us isn't, isn't about the revenue fee. The real impact is if termination rate comes in below the, the absolute cost of terminating a call, yeah. then that'll have an impact. And that's why we're arguing against uh, further reduction. Uh, what's interesting is that you are rolling out 3G quite extensively. We know that you had a product, Unlimited Wireless. Um, of course, that offering now being scrapped. Uh, what kind of move are you going to be making going forward to ensure that you do remain competitive in this space at the same time? Obviously quite ex uh, expensive exercise to roll out 3G. I'm sure that you actually need to look at new towers, one would ex assume. Yeah, I mean, a big part of being competitive is, is about being the biggest network. So we have five times as many 3G base stations as our nearest competitor. That in itself is a competitive advantage. But I think as an industry, we need to be a little more clever about how we price data. And I think here in Kenya, we haven't done so, including us, which is why we stopped it, uh, because we couldn't continue to do something which was clearly unprofitable and, and non-commercial. So that's why we stopped it. But in terms of our total number of data users, which is just short of 5 million, the people who were using Unlimited actually didn't represent that big a number. Mm. Uh, is this where the big growth is going to come from? You're talking about voice, a lot of people saying that there isn't a lot of room to grow on the voice revenue side of things. You've proved otherwise. Uh, the mix between data offerings versus voice and uh, obviously the profit split there. Which would you say is going to uh, you know, give you that, that profit boost that you require? Well, non-voice is currently taking almost a third of our overall uh, total revenue. Um, so M-Pesa is going to continue to grow. You know, about 98% of transactions, money transactions in Kenya is done on M-Pesa. So there's a lot more to go there. Um, and, and data, I think we're only just about scratching the surface. I would like to see much bigger data growth in this coming year than we did in the past year. And, and the real key to achieving that is getting low-cost handsets into the customer's hands. Uh, what's also interesting is that you've increased your dividend. Uh, I'm sure a lot of investors are seeing this as a vote of confidence with regards to growth in the future. Uh, could you tell us about your dividend policy going forward? Um, yeah, we were really pleased to be able to give that 10% uplift on dividend. It's, uh, it's the highest we've given since we've listed. And the policy going forward is a progressive one. And by progressive, we mean that um, we will always pay at least as much as we paid last year. It'll be determined by a number of external factors because currently interest rates are still sitting at about 18% on the central bank rates. Uh, and we've got an election year coming up. So there's some volatility around there. So at this stage, we're going to commit to the dividend policy, which is progressive, pay as much as you did last year. And you know, if we can increase in that, then uh, you know, we'll be happy to do that. But we're really pleased to be able to give shareholders a better return than we did last year. Absolutely. And from a cost perspective, uh, give us an indication of how you're managing those, uh, you know, that specific side of things, uh, given the fact that costs have increased quite dramatically over the last few years. Yes, costs have increased, but you know, again, this is a game of two halves. So if you look at cost in the first half and the second half, it remained relatively stable, whereas revenue, revenue grew. So we, we, drew, we drove a number, of, uh, a number of initiatives around transmission costs um, and generally OPEX costs, managing our OPEX costs much better. So our headcount, for example, remained flat across the, uh, the year. Um, the, the growth really was much more inflationary driven than anything else, because when you're running with as high as 19% inflation at some point during the course of the year, it's difficult to contain those costs in the same way. But a number of very harsh cost-based initiatives um, as, we, as we go forward. And what we've effectively done this, this six months is to reshape the business in order to operate much more efficiently. So we're pretty confident that we will get our costs in line with industry norms outside of Kenya.